And Jen, just a sense of the first 20 minutes. Well, how important it is to have an approach to play to win. And that's a big difference from wanting to not lose. Jennifer Botterill has had that winning approach for years. Jennifer Botterill now beats the defense in on goal. Botterill scores! Her Hockey Canada resume includes three Olympic gold medals and five world championships. How did you feel that Charlene played today in that? I thought she did well. Um, I think for her it was just getting a little bit used to the game experience. She retired after the Vancouver Olympics and went into broadcasting as a game analyst. And let's go ringside. Here's Jennifer Bothrow. Thanks, Brennan. Well, four on four will provide the team with a little bit more space. And in 2018 made the move to the United States, working between the benches for the New York Islander games. Jennifer, obviously we wanted to know how Jean-Gabriel Pajot would look in the opening period. Uh, it looked good. He did look good. And he's a player that you could describe as, as very reliable. Back in Canada and on the desk with Ron McLean this past season, the Hockey News has called her a breakout star. You're doing something bold, meaningful, long-lasting. She is a supporter of the Professional Women's Hockey Players Association, the PWHPA and she feels it will soon lead to the creation of a new professional league for women. Jennifer, thank you very much for joining us. It's a pleasure to connect with you. Thanks for having me, Ian. You are living the dream so many people, maybe even me to an extent, would love to be on Hockey Night in Canada. What is that like? Well, it's been really enjoyable that I, I love the game of hockey. And uh, if I look back at, at, back at my, my competitive playing days, I feel very fortunate for that experience. And now to have the opportunity to stay connected to the game, but in a different capacity, uh, has been a real thrill for me. I hope when we do an interview in even two or three years, that, that the fact that you're a, a woman in this role is incidental. No one even talks about it. But look, we're at a moment in history and broadcasting where there are more and more women in sports, including hockey. How significant is that part of it for you to be a woman doing this job now? Well, I think all of us um, that are covering the sport in various roles right now, whether it's people that are on camera doing analysis or if it's the production team or directing uh, in any capacity, I think we all take a lot of pride in our roles and we're hopeful that in the future, the choice should be there regardless of gender or race or, or any situation that the choice should be yours. And I compare that to even the grassroots of hockey that I love that in our country now, that it's a choice for girls to play the game. And for all of us involved, um, you know, on the business side of sport and covering the sport, I think all of us feel very strongly that the choice should be there in any role in hockey, whether it's in broadcasting, whether it's in coaching or executive roles in the league, I think we're hopeful that in, in any role, that choice should be available. I read a really interesting story about a moment, the, the way you'd kind of pause and reflect as you headed from classes to the rink at Harvard. And I wonder if you use that approach today. Very much so. and. I look back and I, I feel very fortunate for my experience at Harvard, both as a student and as a hockey player. And I do feel like I developed a lot as a person and I called them little moments of appreciation. And I would say it's very much the same um, when I'm heading into the studio and, and whether it's Hockey Central or Hockey Night in Canada or a Stanley Cup playoff game, that it is busy and it's intense in those moments, knowing that it's potentially millions of people that are watching but that's also the, the excitement, the thrill. And if you think back to being an athlete and playing in front of millions of people, that those are the moments that you train for and you prepare for. And I very much carry that forward to these opportunities as a broadcaster and as an analyst to say, well, these are the moments that you want to shine and you want to thrive in these moments. You are much more, of course, than a broadcaster and a former hockey player. You're a, an advocate of, of women and girls hockey right now. What, what does success look like to you? How would you define success for women's hockey? Success is, is on a few levels. Uh, I've certainly supported the PWHPA and they believe um, in a sustainable women's professional league. So it's that sustainability at the elite level, but part of their vision is very important because that's very much um, in line with my beliefs that it's not just about the elite players, but if they have that professional league, that will in turn influence those that are 
registering to play the game at a young age. So it's about having that professional women's hockey league for girls to, to dream about and to strive towards the chance to play there one day. But it's the effect that that will have on, on young girls uh, growing up that want to now register and get involved with the game. And, and so I think that success is, is on many levels from that grassroots up to the elite level. And it does feel like we're on the verge of something special uh, for elite women's hockey players. And so I'm hopeful that we will get to that point sooner than later. And back to Hockey Night in Canada. Are you having fun? <laughs> I am having a great time. Thanks for asking. Yes. All right. Jennifer, thank you very much. Pleasure. Thank you.